What's up everybody? Welcome to another TKinter tutorial video, part of our TKinter mega series making a baller program. So, uh, where we left off, we've got the chart actually showing some great stuff. We've seen how our backend functionality allows us to add subplots, remove subplots, add, you know, throw in SMA, EMA, that kind of stuff. Awesome, pretty candlestick charts based on the data we set, and now we're ready to show the indicators, so the top and bottom indicator. So we just have two major indicators at the moment, RSI and MACD. And so now I'm going to show you guys how we're going to grab those indicators, and we're going to use the, um, the CFBDC API to grab the indicator information. So uh, come down to our animation function. I'm just going to do Control F. My fingers are getting very tired from bulk scrolling. And within the animation function is where we're going to put uh, the other data, like RSI indicator, for example. So enter, enter. And here we're going to define, not in all caps, define RSI indicator, like that. And then RSI indicator, you're going to pass the parameters of price data, and then you're going to pass the location data. And we'll go ahead and just make a default top parameter there. Um, but I think we've actually, we filled that in every time. But then quickly, the question that we ask is if location equals top, uh, we're going to say um, the values equals, and this is basically uh, a dictionary of information here. So we're going to say values equals what? So we're going to say key. This is the key that we pass through the API. Uh, and then we're going to say the prices are the price data, and that's why we have you know price data at the end. Um, and I, yeah, we we did it for all the tick data. And I believe it's covered even on our, our Huobi, but we'll have to check and make sure. Um, price data, and then we have um, the periods. Periods uh, colon top indicator one so this is this kind of just matters just simply because and in theory I guess we could just just set periods under this um, but in theory you could have an RSI indicator on the top and on the bottom and have them at like moving at different paces or something right so anyway we're just we're gonna preset these so if location equals top <clears throat> and then we're gonna say if location equals bottom basically the exact same thing only it's bottom indicator one. Now, now that we've done that, we're ready to uh, pass this information to the CFBDC API and get the return. So the URL for this specific query is going to be http colon slash slash cfbdc.com slash API slash indicator slash RSI. So that is going to give us uh, the RSI indicator information based on the, the data that we pass through. So what we'll do now is we're going to say data equals URL lib dot parse dot URL encode. So we're going to encode this values dictionary uh, that we that we've defined here. So we encode values, and then we're going to say data equals U R or actually I'm sorry data equals data dot encode into UTF-8. Um, and just for the record, if anyone's like confused about this, I do have a URL lib basic tutorial in my uh, Python 3 basics playlist. So if you don't quite understand what's happening here, uh, check that out. Uh, we'll get rid of this slash there. Uh, so data equals data dot encode into UTF-8. Now we're going to say the rec for request equals URL lib dot request dot capital request. Um, and we're going to request that URL with the data. Um, then we're going to do the response. God, I'm so itchy today. Response equals URL lib dot request dot URL open. And we want to open that the request that we want to make, <laughs> which will return the response that we want to get. And then we're going to say resp data equals the resp.read. And that is in 
uh, bytes. So we need to decode that. And again, I my code is converting it to a string and removing the Bs. I'm not sure why I did that, but we're gonna just not do that. So we're gonna say uh, new data equals, let's see, I'm trying to see here, new, mm, this is a mess. Let's see, let me look at, uh, the way I've done it is pretty sloppy, but then I almost need the sloppiness here. Uh, so new data dot, uh, new data equals resp data dot decode. So at least we decode the bytes there. And then now we're going to split by, I'm not really sure I like this. Uh, we'll have to fix this later, but we'll say price list equals new data dot split by this absolutely nastiness. Uh, <laughs> And we might need to convert, uh, that should be in string format, but we may need to actually convert that to string, but we'll, we'll see if we get away with this. Um, and then we're gonna say RSI data equals, and we're gonna do some uh, sexy one-liner here, float, it's the float i for the i in price list. So we're basically converting everything here. Everything here was a string, right? We can we've split it by this comma space, and it's still in string format. And so now what we're actually doing here is we're basically converting for for i in price list. We do float i, and so this is just a really like easy one line function that that's what it does. So it returns it to RSI data. Now uh, we want to actually put the RSI data up. So if the location is uh, top, it goes on the top graph. So we're going to do a0. That was the top subplot. a0 dot plot underscore date. Um, and then we do OHLC. And then it is MPL dates. And then uh, we plot the RSI data. And then. Um, yeah, light, we'll do light color, I guess. We could do light or dark, really. Um, and then label equals RSI. Now, uh, we might actually, well, we may advance this a little bit. Um, if you guys aren't familiar, I, I wrote uh, the, the customizing matplotlib tutorial, and we wrote some, some fancy code there that, like, if, if the RSI was greater or less than a specific number, it would fill between. So generally, if the RSI is greater than 70, that shows that it's almost too strong and it's going to bounce back down, basically. So anything above 70, it fills between the 70 line and where the RSI is. So it'll fill like, like a block of red, and then it comes down. And then when it's generally like really, really low, it fills that with green. And the idea there is with the RSI is it, it designates whether something is overbought or oversold. Um, so that's the point of that. So anyway, A0, we do that. Um, then we're gonna say, <laughs> my code, I use that label. I guess we'll, we'll continue that. E equals um, RSI. Uh, and then generally you have RSI and then in parentheses you have the value. So RSI, this. And for all those people that like to do percent s and all this stuff, I'm really sorry. Uh, feel free to uh, do that if you'd like. I've just always done it this way, and I don't think I'll ever stop. Top indicator uh, one, and then we just need it plus, and then the closing parentheses. So if it's a 14, it would say RSI 14. Okay. So now a zero dot set underscore y label, and we set it to that label really professional code here. So now we're going to say if location equals uh, bottom, basically the same code. So let's just go ahead and um, copy this colon paste. And instead of a zero, it is a three, a three. Uh, everything else remains the same, I believe. And that should be it. So let's save that and let's go ahead and run it and see what happens. Agree. Top indicator, let's set it to the RSI. Indicators on tick data not available, of course. So let's pick one day data time frame. Top indicator, RSI. Nice little warning message if I if I do say so myself. No! Could not convert string to float, not a number. 
Hmm. Uh, filled in the non tick. Um, mm -mm. it's really weird because we passed. Trying to think of why, because we've we we've removed not a number already, so that shouldn't actually be a problem. We uh, let's remove uh, dat label. Just I don't. It doesn't seem to me like it would be dat label, but um, let's go ahead and remove that really quick. One day RSI. So it's clearly like sending the data and it's coming back as cannot convert string to float, failing in that. Um, let me, let's see, we're graph, ooh, this is driving me nuts because we were plotting date here. Um, it's got to be failing in here. So let's go ahead and add a, a quick try here. Accept uh, exception, whoops, as e print. Uh, failed in RSI string E and while we're doing that also let's scroll up to the very top and instead of tick we want it let's just start it with we'll do one day let's go back to our program here one day top indicator RSI and it should give us an error in RSI right Failed RSI, could not convert string to float, not a number. Why is not a number in my, um, hmm, okay, so it's just weird that we're returning a not a number uh, here now. What if... Um, let's go animate. It's probably failing right here, right? So price list, it's failing in the conversion there. Well, um, because you can't convert, you know, not a number to that. But, but why are we failing on the RSI? Let's see. Just running the main one at the moment. I just want to make sure that my API isn't down or something. Right. Okay. So the API is not down. I'm just a little concerned then. Um, uh, I'm too tired. I think we'll have to we'll have to just come back to this. Um, but for now, I'll just give you guys uh, the code that will just you know tear this apart at least. Um, uh, I hate to do this. <laughs> so rest data equals rest dot read. Um, that's fine. And then basically what we can do at this point is we can say new data uh, equals the string version of resp data uh, dot replace. I still don't understand why no no it's driving me nuts. Anyway, replace uh, the B in bytecode with nothing, and then dot replace uh, the brackets with nothing. This is ugly, ugly. Dot replace uh, closing brackets with nothing. And then we have a quote there that we need to replace. And that would do it, okay. So that gets rid of everything. Then we would have price list equals uh, new data dot split uh, by comma space. That would be the price list. And then the RSI data would not, is, should be unchanged. So let's try that. And at least we have RSI data there. Um, Obviously, I'm not very happy with that, if you can't tell. 
<laughs> we'll definitely have to uh, fix that code. I don't. This is so just pathetic. So, so we'll have a fix for that hopefully in the coming videos. Uh, the next video will cover MACD. Although we'll probably maybe before the next video we'll we'll have to have a solution for this because otherwise we're going to run into the same problem with MACD. So, anyways, that's that. Stay tuned to the next video. If you have any questions or comments besides how bad that was. Uh, please feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support, the subscriptions, and the donations. And until next time.